Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk sports, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I don't mean to pick on a great fighter, right? I don't. I have the utmost respect, and I mean the utmost most respect for Saul Alvarez right but now folks are relooking at that Kovalev film aren't they and they're noticing that Canelo's volume really wasn't that great right Canelo's patient Canelo you know is backing up Kovalev but in terms of punches thrown, we can argue about punches landed. But in terms of punches thrown, there are stretches of that fight where Canelo doesn't throw that many punches. There's even a round that Canelo takes off in a fight in which he's not throwing that many punches. So I believe we need to ask the question because he was in against a guy in his mid-30s. Right? We need to ask the question of when will Canelo fight a guy under 30 again? Folks, it's been some time. It's been years. You have to go back, believe it or not, past Golovkin. You have to go all the way back to 2016. 2016 to find a Canelo fight where he fights a guy under 30. Now, let me just say, boxing is a young man's game. Understand, Marvin Hagler left the sport at 32. A lot of fighters leave the sport around that age. Andre Ward walks away around that age. Right? Canelo has been fighting guys who, quite frankly, may have peaked already earlier in their careers. Right? Prime Kovalev. Was it this guy? Or was it the guy who beats up Jean Pascal? Prime Glovkin. Let's remember. Golovkin has a streak of chaos that gets snapped by Danny Jacobs before, before he fights Saul Alvarez. Danny Jacobs, great fighter, 32 years old, had problems making weight. All you have to do is look at him at the weigh-in, and then you're thinking to yourself, wow, is that Danny's brother? This, this guy looks a lot like Danny, but thinner than Danny. Then you realize, oh, that's Danny. Right? The Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight. I think it goes without saying. Just look at the betting line on the fight. That Chavez Jr. had had his prime years well before he fought Canelo. And, of course... When he fights Canelo, that's at a catch weight, right? Chavez Jr. had to make weight to have that fight. And, of course, Chavez Jr. was in his 30s, right? So, again, you have to go back to Liam Smith in 2016 to find Canelo against a 20-something in a sport that's widely considered a young man's game. Now, Canelo's making top dollar. Deserves to make top dollar. But you and I know, with top dollar comes responsibilities. Right? The Zone's paying this guy a lot of money. A lot of money. He certainly earned the money. He's getting sellouts in big venues. He's fighting serious opponents. But he seems to be fighting them 
after they've peaked, when they're later in their careers, right? Let's be clear on Kovalev. Ward officially beats Kovalev twice, right? Elidor Alvarez beats Kovalev. All of this happens before Canelo fights and beats Kovalev. So, what I want to do here, because boxing's about the new. 20-somethings matter in the sport, right? Let's not get too carried away trying to imagine upcoming fights with Canelo in his 20s against other older guys <laughs> in their mid to late 30s. Right? Isn't Golovkin older than 35 years old? Isn't he in his late 30s now? So why don't we actually dare to do something a little bit different here? Rather than thinking about Baturbiev in his mid-30s, and I do think that'd be a great fight. Why don't we at least consider guys in their 20s? Is it too much to ask? When Canelo just picked up a light heavyweight title. He's holding a super middleweight title and a middleweight title. Now, as I've said here online before, forget about Canelo at middleweight. You look at the lack of body fat on Canelo at 175 and you realize he can't make 160 ever again, at least not in this lifetime. So let's just focus at 175 and 168. And let me just say this. I'm going to name guys who, quite frankly, give Canelo tough fights. Right? I'm going to name two guys who I think, dare I say it here, beat Canelo. I know the public will disagree with me. Hey, this is all opinion, right? This is the world we live in. Disagree with me, please. You know, and I'm going to name one guy who I think Canelo beats, but who I think Canelo gets tested by. Right? First, let's talk about the guys who I think beat Canelo. I think Bivol, the champ at 175, a guy who saw the fight from the front row, saw the Canelo Golovkin fight from, excuse me, the Canelo Kovalev fight from the front row, and who after the fight called out. Canelo. I think he beats Canelo in part because he has the volume that Kovalev doesn't have. Right? I think if you study Canelo, you understand. He has an A plus left hook. Right? It's a great punch. It's explosive. But he needs to come up to you a bit to throw that left hook. A guy with volume who can actually circle with young lungs. By young, I mean late 20s lungs. Right? We aren't even talking about early 20s. I believe Bivol is 28 years old. A guy with volume, a guy with stamina, a guy who's going to move around the ring a little bit. A guy who knows that that Kovalev fight was close when Canelo gets the KO. And who understands that Kovalev really isn't naturally a mover. Right? Kovalev has a great jab, but Kovalev normally doesn't move as much as he moved in the Canelo fight. Kovalev claimed he was tired after the sixth round. What if Canelo's in the ring against a guy who doesn't get tired after moving for six rounds? Right? Let me invite the public to consider the idea of Canelo in a unification match at 175 against another champion who's actually younger than him, with more volume, who's not supposed to be big for a light heavy. Right? Please consider Bivol among the list of opponents, future opponents for Canelo. Let me also name a guy who I think beats Canelo 
Let me put this diplomatically. He has the title at 168 pounds. He's 27 years old. He's much faster than Canelo. He moves better than Bivol and Kovalev. Right? He's the kind of guy who has the kind of creativity who could make a slow-moving fighter look bad. Now, I'll agree, Canelo hits harder than this guy, but this guy's cat quick. I'll agree, this guy, at times, leaves volume on the side of the road. But in terms of looking slick, in terms of making an opponent who doesn't have the fastest feet look like an opponent who doesn't have the fastest feet, I think 168-pound champion Caleb Plant would be too much for Canelo. Let me say this, too. Understand, if Canelo fights Plant, Canelo doesn't have to lose the weight to fight at 168. They can have the fight at 175. Caleb Plant doesn't have to gain the weight to fight at 175. Boxing history is replete with guys who were smaller fighting guys who were bigger and not gaining the weight to do so. Go back and look at Ray Robinson's weight against Joey Maxim when they fought for Maxim's light heavyweight title. Right? If I plant, I don't want to play games with my speed. Right? One of the things not talked about enough for Canelo Kovalev is the idea that Canelo's lower volume may have been the result of him carrying extra weight. Canelo himself, after the fight, said he had a problem getting to Kovalev's body. Right? Just imagine the problem he's going to have trying to get to Caleb Plant's body. Right? Caleb Plant's 27. I'll agree. Caleb Plant looks exhausted to me at the end of fights. He puts a lot into it. The later rounds of a battle between him and Canelo would be interesting. But wow, he would own the early rounds, wouldn't he? Didn't Kovalev just own the early rounds against Canelo? Finally, let's talk about another guy in his 20s. Right? Callum Smith. Now, I think Smith gets beaten by Canelo. But you're kidding yourself if you don't think that Smith is going to land some shots. Understand, both of those men fought Rocky Fielding. Rocky did not make it out of the first round against Callum Smith. He simply didn't. Let me also say this too. Callum Smith fought a guy who moves better than Canelo. Right? A guy who... You know, when he's at his best, might actually be better than Canelo. George Groves. Callum Smith won that fight by stoppage. Right? Callum Smith views himself as alpha. What happens when he meets Canelo? Let me say this too. I know Callum Smith leans over. No question about it. He gives away his height. You know, I would prefer for Callum Smith to lean backwards, to be more Vitaly Klitschko than a tall guy giving away his height. That's what happens when you fight at too low a weight, right? You're fighting against smaller guys. There are very few guys as tall as Callum Smith, right? Very few guys as tall as Callum Smith at 168. So you're fighting against smaller guys, and then it affects the way you fight. So Callum Smith is accustomed to crouching over, leaning forward, his head a little bit in front of his feet, and fighting guys. If he in a training camp, and he might not be able to do so, but if he can figure out how to lean backwards, are you sure that Canelo's left hook, which he throws with devastating effect up top, you saw how the Kovalev fight ends. It's the left hook that has Kovalev do the dance before Canelo closes it with the straight right hand. If he's fighting a tall guy like Callum Smith, 
five eight, let's be real, against six three. Are you sure Callum Smith can't find a way to lean in such a way that Canelo can't reach him by surprise with the left hook? You take away that left hook up top from Canelo if Callum Smith fights in a way where all of Canelo's left hooks have to be to the body. That fight could be intriguing. Let me also say this too. Tall guy, longer reach, power puncher. Now I think Canelo wins the fight because I think eventually Canelo lands too many body shots. But think about how Callum Smith suddenly turned that George Groves fight. Folks, that was sudden. His punching power is that way. Now Kovalev was afraid to throw the right hand. What happens if Callum Smith is throwing right hands? What happens if Canelo, on the way in, trying to walk down his opponent, actually has to think about right hands coming back? And what if Callum Smith is able to throw the right hand because he can use his height rather than lean over like Kovalev does? What if Callum Smith can use his height so that if he throws the right hand and Canelo counters it, Again, Callum Smith is rolling with the punch. Callum Smith is too far away. Canelo ends up reaching. So, it's kind of an undiscussed story in boxing. Canelo has been fighting A-plus level guys. Right? But, they're older. They're older. Let me name another guy, too. And I know this guy is now in his 30s. At least I believe he is. Right? Demetrius Andre is oversized for 160. Right? A lot of the public wants an Andre Canelo fight. Both guys are with the zone. I'm guessing that if they went to the zone and said, hey, we want to fight each other, the zone would say, yeah, that, that gets our approval. That fight gets a wow. Well, understand, if Canelo's last fight was at 160, and then he was able to jump to 175, right? If Bernard Hopkins was at 160, and he was able to jump to 175, why doesn't Andre decide to leave 160, fight Canelo at 175, he doesn't have to go all the way to 175 because I know it's easier to gain weight than to lose weight. Right? Andre might not want to stick around 175. So why not sign to fight Canelo? You could come in at 168. I think the world just saw a close fight. Folks, one judge had it even. Right? Let's be real. One judge had it even. I think the world just saw a close fight between a guy with a jab who kept Canelo outside and at low volume and Saul Alvarez, who was able to close the show not early but in the 11th round. Right, don't you think a jabber like Andre, who, let's face it, moves better than Kovalev, don't you think he was encouraged by Canelo's next fight? Now, why are we here focusing on Canelo, folks? It's because he's at the center of boxing. There are guys in multiple weight classes who want a shot on him. Why? Because this is that fighter with belts in three weight classes. As I've said, with the big money comes big responsibility. Understand, too, I know Canelo's been fighting a long time, right, since he was a teenager. He's only 29. An argument can be made that he's in his prime right now. If I'm Saul Alvarez, I focus on legacy more than I do the dictates of any sanctioning body. Right? From this point forward, and I believe he has this philosophy in general, he should only focus 
on the challenging opponents. He should only focus on things like unifying titles, fighting unbeaten fighters, right? Fighting guys the public feels might beat him. Forget the easy fights, forget the paydays, and I'll agree, let's face it, boxing's about getting paid. You're a professional prize fighter. You're fighting for the prize. But my point is Canelo has been paid so much and has such a plum deal that at this point he needs to challenge himself and he needs to challenge boxing. Let me shake things up even more. I'm not convinced that 175 is the final destination place for Canelo. Right? The punching power was magnificent at 175. We've seen Kovalev get hurt before. Have you seen Kovalev get hurt like that? Right? I, I didn't see Kovalev that shaken up even in the Elidor Alvarez first fight. Right? Don't get me wrong. He's overwhelmed. He's going down. But here he's on his feet and he's doing a dance before the right hand drops him. Right? Understand, the Alvarez fight, he's knocked down multiple times. He's able to get up off the canvas. This fight, Russell Morris stops it. He can't get off the canvas. So my point to you is this. You've already seen Usyk leave Cruiser to go to the heavyweight division. Right? Dordikos is in his mid-30s. Right? He's in his mid-30s. Folks, he's going to start slowing down. Father Time is the only unbeaten person, really, in boxing history. Right? And so, Maris Breedis, he's in his 30s. Where are the 20-something cruiserweights? If you don't know their names, if these guys are up and coming, why can't Canelo enter that mix? Understand, Canelo dictates everything at this point because he is the cash cow. He has earned the title of box office king. So if Canelo says to a cruiser, I'm willing to meet you at 190, understand, Canelo doesn't have to get to 190. Canelo can weigh 185. Right? What did Canelo actually weigh when he entered the ring against Kovalev? Post weigh-in. Canelo can weigh 185. Understand how brutal making 190 is going to be for a guy who's been making 200. Right? Just look at Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 164 when he fought Canelo. Right? He was finished and he had just lost, what, four pounds? Well, with Chavez Jr., probably more like 10 pounds. But the bottom line is, he was finished at 164. If Canelo approaches some cruiserweight, right, and says, hey, fight me at 190, are you sure Canelo's going to be in over his head? Understand, guys like Dennis Lebedev have retired. Right? The old guard is leaving the division. And they've been fighting at a heavier weight than 190. So I think Canelo at this point holds more cards than any of us want to admit. I'm just asking politely in this video that he consider fighting a guy under 30 since that hasn't happened since more than three years ago. Right? It's November of 2019, folks. I believe it's September of 2016 when he fought Liam Smith. Right? That's how I see it. By the way, there are other guys who I want to see Canelo against. In other words, Canelo's a fascinating person. You wonder what happens if he fights Billy Joe Saunders. I'm one of those who believes he wouldn't be in over his head against Arthur Baturbiev. Right? That would be an unbeaten fighter who's supposed to be heavy at 175. Right? 
I think Canelo hits harder than Baturbiev. Not only that, Baturbiev, to me, doesn't really have long-range power. He's a guy who likes to come up close and hit you on the side of the head. Right? He's a hook artist in close. Well, Canelo wants you to hunt him, doesn't he? I know Canelo's been a hunter. Think about it. Against Rocky Fielding at 168 and Kovalev at 175. I know Canelo was the hunter in the rematch against Golovkin. He's had success on his front foot. But don't you see the full display of Canelo's boxing ability when someone like Danny Jacobs tries to find him early in their fight and Canelo is moving his head? Has Jacobs missing? Is countering Jacobs? Isn't Canelo really whether he's on his front foot or his back foot, a counter puncher, not a lead puncher. Even against Kovalev, he's coming forward. But what does he do when he comes forward? He doesn't just start throwing punches. He waits for Kovalev to throw a punch. And then Canelo tries to counter him. Right? So my point to you is Canelo against Paterbiev. Baturbiev on his front foot. Wouldn't Canelo make a miss? Doesn't Canelo know how to hold his head in such a way that Baturbiev's shots would bounce off of his shoulders? Are you sure Baturbiev can take Canelo's power? I'm not. Anyway, that's how I see it. I think Canelo has a lot of roads that he can travel. I'd like to see not the old guard, I'd like to see the new guard be seriously considered for a Canelo fight. How about guys younger than Canelo, Bivol and Callot Plant? <laughs> what's, what's wrong with dealing with guys with young lungs, possibly more stamina, given that Canelo was low volume and took 11 rounds to catch up with Kovalev? Right? Food for thought. Let me hear your views. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.